Jerry Show with Jerry's friends Mort Saul, Kay Stevens, Clifton Fadiman, Jack Jones, Harry James and his music makers, and Lou Brown and his orchestra. This portion is brought to you by Night Hall for natural, refreshing street sleep and Hyde's ketchup. No other ketchup tastes like Hyde's. And by L&M for flavor and taste, it's L&M. And now, here's the star of our show, Jerry Lucas. Uh, Luma. Uh, Lewis. Just vamp. The vamp will be fucked back up. Back up. Give me the room. Give me the room. Back up. This is live. You nuts. I heard of air living, but that's ridiculous. Play the vamp. When you're smiling, pop, pop. When you're smiling, that's my new love, you. When you're laughing, pop. When you're laughing, <laughs> I guess I'm coming. That's why I wake up so happy, happy inside each time you break up. It kind of kicks me with pride. So keep The big screen went out already? Yeah. That's live to you, dirty no good. <laughs> I'd like to say welcome to all of you nice ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to all of you ladies and gentlemen at home. Ah, uh, come in, Tracy, did you get fair shape? Good boy. I, I would like to say that I realize two hours is an unusual amount of time, but I want to answer the big question. What are you going to do for two hours? What are you going to do for two hours? Such people were concerned and worried. Actually, I was forced into it. I wanted four. <laughs> Keep the kids quiet for crying out loud. After all, let's face it, movies are a lot longer than two hours, you know. Have you ever heard anyone say, what can Liz and Dick do for two hours? <laughs> this is on, isn't it, sweetheart? Wonderful. Now, everybody's worried about how long the show is already, and I'd like you to know that all over town, they're calling me Lawrence of Bel-Air. <laughs> See, it's a joke uh, about the long movies. You remember the movie they made with the sand and the, the Jewish fella that killed my people? Hmm. Well, anyhow, somewhere during the two hours, we'd like you to know we've scheduled 15 minutes to rehearse next week's show. <laughs> uh, and we invited this crowd, is that it? All right. Let me say this. We have many, many things to do, and it gives me an opportunity to do the things that I've never been able to do on television. As a matter of fact, it gives me an opportunity to do some of the things that I've always wanted to see done on television. For example, next week, September the 28th, God willing, we're still on. September the 28th, I will operate on my own appendix. <laughs> All right, we're working this way to the band. Fellas, I, I, I want to say this. We have a tremendous guest lineup. We have an awful lot of nice people, and I would like to introduce specifically my conductor and the gentleman of the orchestra, a young man who's been with me for, uh, oh, a week. It's really, uh, he's been with me really now 15 years, and I would like to say right here now publicly that were it not for his talent, his ability, without his loyalty, I probably would have gone ahead and done just as well. <laughs> My conductor, Mr. Lou Brown, and the orchestra, ladies and gentlemen. Come walk over this way. You want to know what you can do for two hours, huh? Uh, would you just step aside for one second, Eddie? I'm sorry to wake you. <laughs> There's another 85 you didn't figure on. 
Um, <laughs> uh, this is Milt Bernhardt on trombone. Uh, Ollie Mitchell back there on trumpet. Uh, we have uh, Ray Heath on trombone. Uh, we have uh, Johnny DeBoot on violin. Shall I go on, or do you know now what I'm going to do for two hours? <laughs> <laughs> I would, how long has it been so far? No, no I got to answer that once and for all. I would like to just do this, please, because I think it's a, you know, it, you can get very negative thinking. And all of the people that constantly wonder, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'd like to show you the time involved in the two hours. Commercials, for example, will run 13 minutes within the two hours. I'm sorry to shake you up, but that's the degree of time because there are people that are concerned with selling their product. This is not really a canteen. Show you see. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> the opening and closing is three minutes, which gives us 16. Then we have the greetings, hi, and all of that nonsense that you were so convulsed over. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this whole group here looks like a bunch of Arabs, and they know what I am. <laughs> now, uh, the two, three, and 13, of course, gives us 18. Now, station breaks and identifications to the local stations is four. That's 22 minutes. What with Lou Brown, the orchestra, and so on, and Kay Stevens, for example, her spot, there's an additional 12, Mort Saul. You know, he can't get started in under 10 minutes until he starts cursing the administration. <laughs> now, Jack Jones, naturally, he does a specific amount of time. We have 54 minutes in that little hunk. Harry James, he didn't fly from Las Vegas, you know, to give a wave like a poor political <laughs> show. So <laughs> Harry, of course, will do some time with the band. We now have, of course, 79 minutes. We have Clifton Fadiman on the show. His introduction runs 16 minutes. <laughs> now, we have 94 minutes. Now, if I do a a couple of bits, like for 25, I got 119 minutes gone. We have one minute to kill. <laughs> and you were all worried about it? Stay with us. I think we'll have some fun. I'd like, that's all right. If you want to, go ahead. We have no time. I, I must tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen. I never in my life saw so many people so worried and so concerned. I am aware of the fact that according to research and statistics, we will probably be playing this Saturday evening to more people than the Academy Awards, which was better than 60 million people. I'm not really too terribly nervous or concerned about it because I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in live television. I believe in NABIT and engineering. I believe in all of the things... <laughs> I believe in all of the things that should prevail. But uh, nonetheless, after listening to people for the last 10 months after they took Leonard Goldenson away, uh, you know, he had made the deal. Jerry, you want to do live television? Two hours, you got it. That's where he, he's now with Hootenanny. And uh, uh, therefore, from that point on, everyone was so concerned and so disturbed and worried, and I appreciated their care and concern. But I maintain that if you have something to say and if you entertain the people, there's nothing more that's really necessary. And we're going to try to do that to the best of our ability. I'd like to introduce a gentleman who's been a very dear friend of mine, a good friend of mine for a long time, who will serve as our announcer and who will serve as my friend from the standpoint of just being a nice gentleman. I would like to meet Mr. Delmore, ladies and gentlemen. Del Hi, Del. How are you, Mr. Lewis? Wonderful. You have that uh, radio television voice. Yes, well, yes, yes. From uh, Hollywood. Mmm, I'm alive. alive. It's the Jerry Lewis. Del, uh, you know, we don't want to do anything like we have been accused of possibly doing, such as there are some magnificent shows on the other networks. You should pardon the expression, Leonard, but there is NBC that has a Tonight Show. And, of course, we have uh, Westinghouse, which has only four poor stations with a guard watching it. And uh, we have Steve Allen on that network, naturally. And uh, Jack Parr is on the NBC network, and he's still crying from Hong Kong. But um, this, of course, being the ABC network, we were accused of possibly doing of that nature. Now, we stealing, have to, you mean? Well, not stealing, literally, but we, we, all we want to do is entertain, and there's not such a, you know, there's not an original, uh, there's not a pattern, or I should say there isn't really a stamp of approval that this is ours and this is yours. So we want to try it. They sit at a desk and they talk. We'll try our show from the standpoint of conversation. Um, here, sit here. Oh, you mean just talk? Just so the point we don't want to, you know, we don't, we don't want to be like, oh, uh, be different. I get like you. Uh, yeah. other shows, Fine, okay. you know. And, uh, isn't that good? Now tell me, when did you first find out your mother was a communist? Tell well, us uh -huh. And you've been frightened of chocolate malteds ever since. Yeah, right? that's, I'm having a little Are trouble. Are you thrilled with this chair, Bill? I like this. this you is... do like it. Let's try the other one. One to the other. No, this is not good.
It was a good idea they had. Yeah, I thought it Move was. over to that one. This might be a little better. See? Yeah. Oh, they oh, expected this. the Peter sisters. This is terrific. <laughs> Kate Smith would fit good. How's that? It's all right if you can sit like this and stare at each other for an hour and a half. Uh, uh, how's the family down? Well, it's not too bad. If you can. <laughs> Just, let's try another up. It doesn't, let's doesn't do as much for me. This I might didn't. be better. Here. 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 Yeah. How's this? Oh, this is all right. This is not Yeah, we could do a farm show. This would be good. Yeah, we could sit here like this. Uh, hi out there, neighbors. <laughs> hi, folks. It's nothing, huh? I wouldn't think it's the best. No, well, we're certainly not going to do uh, a whole season. Try this. What's this? We get in a lot of trouble from this, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, listen. You know what they say. <laughs> I got one joke that would make Liz and Dick a forget about it. <laughs> no, this is no good. Let's try an original idea. All right. Let's go over to a desk. And I'll sit here. And you sit there. And ours is more expensive anyhow. It's getting more familiar all the time. Isn't How's that? <laughs> hey, is that better? I like it. Tell me, doctor. I think I'm in the shadows here, but that's OK. <laughs> no, I think you can be safe. Isn't this comfortable? Uh, what are you holding? Do you, have, do you have something you want to tell me? Oh, all right. Excuse us a moment. Yes. May I have one of those, please? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> play with the Mets. <laughs> yes, sir, folks. Want a cigarette? <laughs> well, L and M said carte blanche, didn't they? <laughs> Whatever Jar wants to do. All right. Here it is. You want to smoke it? That's your business. <laughs> well, they told me whatever I want to do. What is that man fainting? Get air for that man. Who is that man that lost his trousers in a booth? Who is that man? Uh, all right, Fred. Now, I must say this, ladies and gentlemen. We have commercials, and we must acknowledge the fact that there are people paying the tab. <laughs> and we would like to acknowledge their presence. For example, L&M. Oh, the other way. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Butterfly. <laughs> L and M. And this is the copy that L and M would like me to read for them. And I think they're entitled to the copy. Oh, yes, yeah, I must make this point. Uh, I have had something that has appeared in the press in terms of what I believe from the standpoint of sponsors and who I would allow as sponsors on my show, only from uh, the standpoint of principle, let's say. Now, I think that uh, for a lot of years, we have taken advantage of commercials. You know, we turn our back on them, we go into the kitchen for a drink, or we tend to uh, ignore them. Well, they're very, very fair people, really. All they want is a minute of your time. You don't necessarily have to buy their product, but they would like you to at least hear what they have to say. And if their salesmanship is of any consequence, you might very well do so. So I think they're entitled to the minute respect. So I would like to make the point. I don't necessarily believe them all, but um, I would like to make the point that they'd like me. <laughs> mm. When a cigarette means a lot, you get lots more from L&M. <laughs> it's the filter cigarette that gives you more body in the blend, more flavor in the smoke, more taste through the filter. It's a whole filter. There's no tobacco. <laughs> L&M contains a special, rich flavor leaf that's longer aged, extra cured. It's ham? What's in there? <laughs> Remarkably rich in flavor. More of it in L&M than even in unfiltered cigarettes. <laughs> Once more, L&M's filter is the modern filter, all white, inside and out. What then, tan? <laughs> if you let them get wet, they're pretty tough to smoke, I'll tell you that. Out, so only pure white touches your lips. No wonder L&M is for people who really like to smoke. I'll tell you this. I have never smoked L&M, very honestly until I became my sponsor, and the sponsor says, would you please smoke the product? I said, I'll try it out. And here, live on television, I'm going to try L&M for the first time. 